In this chapter, we will be presenting 5G authentication, encryption, and integrity for 3GPP access. The non-3GPP access authentication flows with IPsec are not presented in this video. The authentication is a basic procedure applied long time before in all type of 3GPP networks, from release 99 to the actual release 19. Authentication guarantee that no one can intercept network data by a man-in-the-middle attack, modify network data, or use your credentials to have access to services. In 5G authentication, there are two key algorithms used in the authentication key negotiation and communication, EAP-AKA and 5G-AKA. The detailed call flow will be explained in the next sections. It's worth mentioning that there is a common part between any 5G authentication algorithms. Any 5G UE will send first authentication request toward the UDM Unified Data Management for algorithm selection and starting the authentication procedure. The UE uses either the 5G GUDI or the PUCI as an input in the authentication procedure. The first entry point for authentication request for a 5G UE is the CF, security anchor function, which can be embedded within AMF. When the SEAF receives the UE authentication request, it adds the serving network ID and sends the request to AUSF, authentication server function. Once received, the UDM deconceal, decipher PUCI to SUPI, and through the SUPI, it choose which 5G authentication algorithm it is configured for the UE. EAP AKA Authentication In UDM, there will be a stored long key, which is will be used to generate ciphering key CK and integrity key IK. After that, the UDM uses the 256-bit hashing function to generate the CK prime and IK prime from the CK and IK. The UDM sends the answer to AUSF, including the authentication vectors AV prime. The AUSF will send RAND and AUTN to CF, which generates the ABBA, anti-bidding down between architectures and NGKSI, 5G keyset identifier that will be used by the 5G UE. We have to mention here that user equipment is composed of mobile equipment and USIM part. The ME part of the UE when receiving the above request shall forward the RAND and authentication token AUTN to the USM. The USM compute the RES based on the received RAND and AUTN, calculate CK and IK from the stored K key and forward RES, CK and IK to the ME. The ME shall generate the CK prime and IK prime from CK and IK. Once done, the UE sends the RES, CK prime, and IK prime to the AUSF, which checks the vectors and validate the success of the authentication. The UDM can set a timer here. This timer can be used to check when the UE had a successful authentication. If this duration exceeds a certain threshold and the UDM receives a the request with an old authentication, the UDM can reject the registration to force the UE to re-authenticate. It is important to mention that each node generates a key that will be used in the ciphering. For more details, please refer to the authentication document. 5G AKA Authentication So what is the difference between EAP AKA and 5G AKA in call flow level? In the 5G AKA, the 5G UDM, does not generate any CK prime and IK prime from CK and IK, but uses the CK and IK to generate the KAUSF, which is generated in AUSF in the EAP AKA algorithm. Also, UDM uses CK and IK to generate XREST star via a hashing 256 bits function. The UDM sends the 5G AKA authentication vectors to AUSF. The AUSF will generate XHRES star from the hashing operation using the XRES star and RAND and sends back RAND and AUTN and XHRES star to CEF. The C forward RAND, AUTN, NGKSI, and ABBA. 
Once received, the UE calculate the OES star and KAOSF and generates KCF from KAOSF. The EEPAK authentication validation is done in AUSF, but in the 5G AKA it is done in CF, and AUSF levels are shown here. Once done, AUSF informs the UDM about the authentication success and generates back the KCF, which will be used to generate the KAMF. The AMF will send it back in a authentication success result to the UE. Why we have calculated all those keys? The answer is after the UE is authenticated, we need to encrypt and apply integrity check for all signaling messages. The AMF will build the security mode command message, SMC, and use the KMF to calculate integrity header and send it to UE. If successfully verified, the UE will build the security mode complete message, encrypt it and apply integrity header and send it back to AMF. Once verification is done in AMF level, all the incoming and outgoing signaling traffic between AMF and UE will be encrypted and integrity protected. For more details, please refer to the attached document with the video. This is the end of our video. Thank you for watching. Please move to the next video.